So, you've just installed Unreal Engine 5.5, maybe even by following my last tutorial, wink wink. But now you're staring at the screen wondering, what the heck do I do next? Well, don't worry, because by the end of this video, you'll have a rock solid grasp of UE 5.5 fundamentals. I'm talking editor interface, viewport controls, and the content browser. Stick around and you'll be navigating UE 5.5 like a pro in no time at all. When you first open UE 5.5, you'll likely see a screen like this. This is the Unreal Project Browser. Here you can create new projects and load existing ones. For the sake of this tutorial, I will create a new project using the third person template. Uh, after picking third person, you will need to choose a project location, which you can do by hitting the folder icon uh, near the bottom middle of the project browser. You will then get a normal Windows file explorer. I like to choose a dedicated directory for all of my projects. After navigating to the folder you wish, you can press the select folder button. After that, you will give your project a name and then you can press create. Unreal will then create your basic project and will open up the main interface. When your project is done loading and compiling any shaders needed, you will see a screen like this. At the very top of the editor, you will see the menu bar. Then right under, you will see the main toolbar, uh, which is right above the level viewport. And under the level viewport, there is the content drawer button and the bottom toolbar. Also, to the side, there is the outliner, followed by the details panel. I know I just dropped a lot of vocabulary, but I will go over it all now in more detail. The menu bar at the very top of the screen contains both general and editor-specific menus. Here you can open files, save projects, access help, or other features depending on the editor you have opened. Next, right under that, you have the main toolbar. This toolbar contains some of the most used tools and commands for the editor. Um, it lets you save your work, change modes, access shortcuts, play your project, configure platforms, and access settings. Then under the main toolbar, you will see the level viewport. I'll cover it more in its own section. Uh, the content browser will be right under the level uh, viewport and can be accessed by clicking the uh, button towards the bottom left of the screen. This will also be covered more in its own section. The bottom toolbar has several sub-functions such as seeing the output log to track builds and the command console to input dev commands. You can also track source control and derived data status, but that is out of scope for this tutorial. To the side of the viewport you'll see two windows. The top one will be the outliner. It is here you can see a hierarchical view of all the content in the level. By default, it's located in the upper right corner of the editor, though I like to move it to the left side of the screen to give it more room. You can do that by clicking and dragging it to the new location. The final part to cover is the details panel. It is here you will see components and details of whatever object you have already selected in the viewport, outliner, or content browser. Uh, for example, if I select this cube, you will see its details. Take some time to look at the details for different objects to get a feel for it, then keep watching when you're done. It is in the level viewport that you can see the contents of the currently open level. The project's default level will open in the level viewport by default. This is where you can edit the contents of your level. Uh, to move in the level viewport, you can right click and then use WASD controls along with uh, moving your mouse to control the camera. Uh, you can also select objects by right clicking them. After selecting an object, you can move it with the arrows, uh, which allow movement in only one direction, or with the central dot to move it in all directions. If you want to rotate objects, you can do so by pressing E, then selecting an object. Instead of seeing arrows, you will see quarter circles. You can rotate an object the same way you would move one, by clicking on the quarter circle for that direction you wish to rotate it in. If you want to make objects bigger or smaller, you can enter scale mode by pressing R. Here you can again use the bar for that direction you wish to scale, or the center dot to scale in all directions. To go back to translate mode, press W. Play around with and get used to these controls because once they become second nature, it will really increase your dev speed. Feel free to pause the video and come back when you're confident with the viewport controls. Also feel free to rewatch this section if you need. Now that we have mastered the viewport, the last part of the UE 5.5 UI to cover in this video is the content browser. It is here that you can see all the files in your project. I always recommend to dock it by pressing the dock and layout button. Uh, this way it is kept open while you work. The workings of the content browser are very similar to the Windows File Explorer. You have folders and files, 
on the side you will see a folder breakdown of all the folders you have access to. The root folder is called all, though most of the time you will not use this one and treat the content folder as the main folder. Uh, when you click on content, if you've been following along, you'll see four different subfolders. Those being characters, level prototyping, starter content, and third person. Just like the Windows File Explorer, you can click into these folders to get a better look. The main thing to keep in mind with the content browser is that in any free space you can right click to make new folders and assets. You can also right click an item to modify it, such as renaming, copying, or opening in the Windows File Explorer. If you want to import assets into your project, you can do that by pressing the import button on the top bar of the content browser, which will open a Windows File Picker dialog box where you can select any supported asset. Also, right next to import, you can always press the save all button to save any assets you have modified uh, without having to go back into them. This is helpful if you close an asset but forgot to save it and forgot which one you modified. It is also recommended to do this before you close UE 5.5 as a sanity check that everything is saved. And that's it! You've gone from knowing nothing about the UE 5 interface to understanding the basics like a pro. With these fundamentals in your toolkit, you're now ready to dive deeper into game development. Keep practicing, and in the next video I'll show you how to set up source control for your projects. Before you go, click on the video on screen now for more helpful tips, and as always, thanks for watching, until next time, have a great day, and bye for now!